In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate multi-site clustering with Hyper-V. For the purposes of this demonstration, I have two sites. Site A, which is the primary site, running on IP address range 192.168.1, and Site B, which is my backup site, or disaster recovery site, which is running on IP scheme 192.168.2. Now, in both sites, I have two nodes, host 1 and host 2, both attached to a local SAN at site A, and in site B, I have host 3 and 4 attached locally to SAN 2 at that location. Now, in a multi site cluster, which is basically a cluster that contains nodes from multiple sites, as in site A and site B, what is necessary is to have shared storage, but that shared storage needs to be viewable by all nodes in your cluster. Now we see a problem here because SAN1 shared storage is only seen by host nodes 1 and 2 and SAN2 is only seen by host nodes 3 and 4. So then it would not be possible to add shared storage or to add all of these four nodes into a single cluster in Windows field of a clustering. In order to achieve this you need to use either software provided by your SAN vendor or third-party software such as Data Keeper, Cluster Edition or SteelEye software or you can use uh, Virtual SAN which is the one that I've used, used in my example here called HP Left Hand SAN P4000 which is available also in a trial version. So what I'm trying to say is that you need to have some way in order to abstract, to provide a layer of abstr abstraction so that both SANs appear as a single shared storage to all four nodes in your cluster. So you get the following as you see here. And only then can this be added as a single shared storage to all four nodes. Now what is important is you need to have replication between SAN1 and SAN2 so that if site A goes down due to some disaster, site B will continue to function with nodes at these sites connected to your array which has up-to-date replicated data from SAN1. So the replication is necessary for multi-site clustering where you have SANs in both sites. And typically with replication, the primary site will be in read-write mode which will host your cluster resources and virtual machines in Hyper-V and your disaster recovery site will be in read-only mode and replication taking place in between both, both SANs. So let's take a look at how this all works practically. I have all four nodes from both of my sites added to a single cluster called VMs and I have my shared storage which is available to all four nodes. Okay. I also have a virtual machine that is currently running on host node 2. And what is important to note that in a field of a cluster that spans multiple sites or a geo cluster, you need to have node and file share majority quorum configuration is recommended. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how multi site disaster recovery works. So I currently have this virtual machine that is running on host node 2. And I want to simulate failure of the SAN in site A. So in order to do that, I'm going to stop or shut down the SAN at site E. Let's take a closer look at how this is all seen from the SAN point of view. So here we have our four servers connected to this volume and we see that they're all connected to site A through this IP address which is the IP address of the SAN. So let's go ahead and stop the 
sun on site E and initiate a failover to the second sun on site B and see what happens. So I'm going to stop start a virtual manager on site B so that quorum will be maintained when I shut down site E. Remember, the virtual machine is currently connected to the storage on site A. So I'm going to stop. ESP Virtual Sun is basically just a, an appliance that runs on Hyper-V. So I'm going to pause this Sun, which is the same as making it not available to nodes at the sites. So now that it's paused, I'm going to get an error here in a couple seconds stating that you can no longer connect to SAN E inside E. So SAN E has been stopped and if you take a look at the iSCSI connections from our host nodes we see that host 2 and where the virtual machine is running has automatically switched to the sun on the second site. So we see the virtual machine is still up and running. It's on host 2 and if you look at where it's connected to, we see that it is currently connected to this connection here, which is the sun iSCSI connection on site B. Okay, and we can feel over this node to the feel over this virtual machine to a node inside B as well. And the uh, virtual machine has successfully been migrated to host 4 and the storage is available on host 4. So if we take a quick look back at our sun view, we see that host 4 has made a connection to the site on sun B, IPHS 2.200. So this ends our brief tutorial on multi-site clustering overview and in another tutorial I'm going to demonstrate exactly how I created this volume, this multi-site sun cluster with this volume that is striped across both suns and replicated.